Okay, so what are some other things that I do to make myself efficient as possible from the very beginning? I'm working in many different suites, in grading rooms on monitor, in different theaters, at home. So you need to have a common kind of workspace. So various software has various tools that allows you to recall user settings, things like that. So in Resolve, I have my own keyboard customizations and I also have my own user preferences, which allows me to set certain things up in the way that I like. So I always have them available, so if I go onto a new machine or a new room, I can just load these presets so that I'm good to go. That is also important with keyboard shortcuts, and depending on the system that you're using, it can really help your efficiency. I usually use the advanced panel when I'm using Resolve, which is three panels and has way more buttons and knobs than this. And that there's an efficiency in doing that because I can get access to everything. But if I need to use a mini or a micro panel, a lot of those buttons don't exist anymore. So I'm gonna rely on using GUI elements, using what's on the panel, and also shortcuts to get me around things. For example, I've been using a little bit here. I've just set these two keyboard, um, like F1, 2, three, four, to go through different multiple playheads so I can look at different frames on the timeline at any one time. If I had the advanced panel, I have buttons to do that there as well. So certain things that allow me to quickly flick between images so that I can check my um, continuity of grades, all of those things need to be at your fingertips so that you can do it instantly because time, especially in the color suite, is money. So you want as much money spent to be seen on that screen, not dawdling around and trying to struggle with an interface. Again, that's why having a control surface with balls and knobs and wheels can really help out because you can, you can separate yourself from the technical of I'm putting more red in the shadows or I'm doing this, I'm doing that and verbalizing it or having to hunt it down in the GUI and your hands, once you have the experience, the muscle memory can just do it. So you don't even think in terms of how you're building the image, you're just doing it. So there's, there's definitely an efficiency of really learning with whatever control surface you have, whether it's just a mouse and a keyboard or with a tablet and a pen or with the various types of control panels that you can use with your color corrector, it really is advantageous to maximize learning each of these tools so that the speed of which you work is really enhanced in the room. So you can spend the most amount of time being creative rather than just trying to get things done. When I use Luster, I have a control panel, which is an old control panel, but I have custom written code for it. So it does a whole lot of functions that weren't there by default because it enabled me to do that. And again, that was just from years of using it saying, hey, wouldn't it be cool if I could do this or that at a push of a button rather than having to grab the mouse and move around. So anything that you can do to speed up your workflow is, is fantastic. So that might be copying, pasting, learning how to paste specific attributes, how to use the tracker to track different areas to what you want the image to stick to, um, just doing a lot of things, a being between two reference images um, or three or four or stills, but being having these things at your fingertips is a massive benefit for being efficient in the room and making the creative process for both yourself and other creatives far more enjoyable. Okay, now we're gonna have a look at some shortcuts and, and some tricks to speed up the efficiency in the room. And I'm gonna start with talking about node structure. All right, in Resolve, you your color correction can be laid out in a node structure. And you can just grade and add nodes as you go along, or you can have a predefined node tree. And the reason I use a predefined node tree is it allows me to do things efficiently. I can ripple colors, so I can just change globally colors over entire scenes because the structure's the same. It's, a, it's quick to copy and paste things. And it's also good if you're working with other colorists or assistants because they can get used to the way you lay things out so they know where to look on how you actually built the color correction. So the way I usually do it is I usually have a node, one or two nodes at the beginning 
If I'm actually uh, inheriting CDL from dailies, I might have that as the very first node, and then I'll add one more serial after that, like this, which is where I do my primary color correction. Then I usually have a like four or five uh, parallel nodes here, and that means it splits out and I can do corrections in those and they're, they're combined evenly together. The reason I have these up front is where I, it's, I use them to pull keys. So I can choose to either pull the key from the balanced primary, or I could actually just get one of these here and pull it from the source. So depending on what I'm trying to do with the key, you know, is where I'm actually pulling my, um, my source for the key from. But that's where I like to do a lot of keys just in this front end. And you would do them post a primary color correction because then you could probably copy and paste those keys over already balanced shots. Whereas if you did it from the source, then that key might actually relate shot to shot because of exposure differences or, you know, things that are just different in the shot. So I then combine them. Then I usually just have a little cluster of four nodes here. I'd usually do a dynamic or something like that in here. And, and what's good with uh, Resolve, you can use it to self-document. So if you are handing off to someone, you can actually label it. So I might do dynamics in here where I do a color change over time. So I can just, you know, I usually just type dyn on there so that either I or someone else knows that I have a dynamic color correction uh, happening. Um, Likewise, I might, if I'm doing um, a clone to remove something, you know, I might just do it here and just type clone. So again, it's really easy for people to find what I've done. And if they need to disable the node, they can do it easily. If it's just a general color correction, I won't label it because I don't have time just to, to label everything. So I usually will label it when it's important or I want to know when I go back to a shot what I'm doing. Next, I have th this series of parallel nodes here but I also have an out, an outside. So for each of these, if I drew, say, a circle, and we go to our map view, in here, it's, it's the opposite. So it's just instead of me doing, needing to add that node later on, I'm just kind of pre-building in case I need it. And the reason I do that is I want to keep the, the node tree as structured and consistent as much as possible, because as soon as you start getting things inconsistent shot to shot, you might rely on rippling color, but if the nodes are numbered differently or whatever, you can start getting um, into trouble. So I kind of try to prepare what I will think, what I think I'm going to use in the show, and then build my tree um, appropriately. Then at the tail end, I just have another series of nodes, you know, this might be four, six, eight, however many nodes. And this is where I do kind of final uh, um, adjustments like if I wanted to do, if there was dust busting or dead pixels or maybe uh, flicker removal or something like that, I'll usually do them at the tail end. Likewise, I might do grain in here um, because then I can adjust that, the grain intensity on a shot by shot um, process. Some people might actually put grain right up the front. And the reason you may do that is you want to truly emulate film so that means as you are grading after the grain, you're stretching the grain and making it more contrasty so you will get an inconsistency in grain, but theoretically it's more realistic to if something was photographed with the grain already in it. I generally don't do that. I usually put grain at the end because I like to having the, the consistency of the grain for the texture because we would usually be trying to match the grain levels anyway. So why give myself that extra hard work if I can just put it at the tail end? Also, with even if I'm not labeling nodes, the, I, I try to be consistent on how I actually use the nodes. So I like doing vignettes up here, you know, I like doing skies here, and then anything else I might throw in the other one. So again, even if it's just for me, I know when I go back to a shot, I'm just automatically going to go to this node here to do a vignette or to modify the vignette. I don't, you know, I don't even... If I wanted to, I didn't don't even need the uh, thumbnails because I just know that's going to be a vignette. But again, you have a lot of ways of, of labeling and communicating either with yourself or other people uh, with the node structure. Another function that you can use for communication with other people is you can put markers in. So I can hit a keyboard shortcut and do a node, say, um, fix balance on this shot. 
So now there's a node, there's a note attached to this particular place. So if I go to my timeline view, I'll scroll it out. You can see there's this little marker here. So someone can just jump to that marker. And if they have, uh, if they have marker overlays on, they can see what the node is straight away. So again, communicating if you have two colorists or more working on a show or assistance, or even in communicating with your editor who's who's actually doing the online conform for you. It's a good way to communicate at a, a specific point in time. You also have a flag system. So you can add flags. So again, you could get into a routine with your editor where you say all new visual effects are flagged pink. So if you made them pink like that, I can see all of the pink shots. And then with the selector up here, you could actually show me all of the pink shots. So it's a way that I could quickly jump to all new visual effects just to check them. So there's a lot of ways to, to communicate without actually talking to someone when multiple people are, are working. And that's great for if you're doing handoff with people working different shifts around the clock. There's, you know, it's a shorthand that you just speeds things up immensely. Okay, if I was to do an effect like where I'm detuning the lens, like doing a lens aberration blur or whatever, I usually put that near the end. I wouldn't put it at the very end because I'd probably want to have my grain node after it because if we're thinking about the real world, the lens is detuned, but the grain is always going to be in focus because that's happening behind the lens. So I'd put the detuning in here and that might be in what they, they say in Resolve is a compound node and a compound node could be something like this. Um, let me do... Um, we'll put a splitter combiner in here just for the for the fun of it. Drag this across. So now what I can do is I can select this series of shots. I can make a compound node, which I could label and say detune. And now that effect is in there. And the way that Resolve works is if I open up this compound, I can do my effect in there. And then I can do a global correction on top of that effect on this node. So um, when I do detunes, I will usually do them as in a in a compound node to kind of obscure it from the day to day node tree. Having a predefined node tree or a structure to your node tree can really help in the efficiency. It can help just with your own day-to-day uh, -day grading, shot-to-shot -shot grading, because you really quickly copy and change entire scenes. But it's also really good when you're working with other people because you can label and, and really split out the color correction so you're not just doing everything in one node or a couple of nodes. And it's handy having parallel portions of your node tree here rather than everything just a serial one after the other after the other. So um, just good tips there just to, to speed up interactivity and um, communication.